Welcome to the EY podcast series on Union Budget 2023. In this session, we are going to discuss the key messages from the economic survey and the FY24 Union Budget from a macroeconomic perspective. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman indicated in her budget speech that in spite of the massive global slowdown caused by the pandemic followed by the geopolitical disruption, India would remain as the fastest growing economy amongst major economies of the world. In this context, it's important to discuss the extent to which the union budget has supported growth. I'm Ragini and I'm very pleased to have with me Dr. DK Srivastava, Chief Policy Advisor, EY India. He's a noted economist and a well-known academician with more than 50 years of experience in public finance and fiscal policy. Dr. Srivastava has held many prominent positions. He was economic advisor to the 10th Finance Commission, principal consultant to the 11th Finance Commission, member of the 12th Finance Commission, and a member of the Advisory Council to the 15th Finance Commission. He has also been associated with a number of committees set up by the central and state governments, as well as by the RBI. Thank you for sparing time today, Dr. Srivastava. Thank you for having me, Ragini. Let me start with India's growth outlook first. The economic survey had pegged a real growth at 6.5% for the next fiscal, but the budget papers used a nominal growth assumption of 10.5% for its calculations. We would like to hear your thoughts on this, sir. Well, the budget does not state the assumption regarding real GDP growth, but we can derive the underlying real growth by using the available information uh, regarding inflation. So nominal growth consists of two components, real GDP growth and deflator-based inflation. The RBI had indicated that the CPI and WPI are likely to fall next year, and it may both of these may be close to 5%. And this is also close to the professional forecaster survey that RBI brings out. So if we allow for an inflation component of 5%, the implied real GDP growth in the budget is 5.2%, which is well below what was uh, presumed in the, what was indicated by the economic survey at 6.5%. The paradox is that while the budget indicates that it is uh, going to stimulate growth, and it says that India is a global growth leader in terms of FY23 and in future also, but then the growth rate is reduced from last year, FY23, which is 7%. So from 7% to 5% is a reduction of 1.8 percentage points in the underlying growth. Uh, and that has an implication for most of the budget numbers uh, because the budget numbers actually indicate the tax revenue buoyancy and the uh, accordingly the revenue receipts are estimated so if those are underestimated then all other expenditure demands are also underestimated incidentally in fy23 the nominal growth assumption was 11.1 percent but the realization came out to be 15.4 percent so only one year prior to fy24 government showed that it had underestimated the nominal GDP growth in FY23. It is quite possible that it is, is still underestimating uh, nominal growth at 10.5%, although the margin may be not as large as last year. Right, sir. Those are valid points. I move to the next question. The FM has taken a target of fiscal deficit of 5.9% of GDP for the next year, but expects the deficit to come below 4.5% by 25-26. If that is the glide path, how long is it going to take to bring the fiscal deficit below 3%, which was the original target of the FRBM Act? Well, uh, this year the adjustment is from 6.4% to 5. 
9%. That is half a percentage point. And if we continue with half a percentage point, then from 5.9 to go all the way up to 3% 3, 3 would require six years, uh, at least five years. But the FM had indicated that next two years would be used in order to bring the fiscal deficit down to 4.5%. So the average reduction in FY25 and FY26 would be 0 0.7 percentage points. After reaching 4.5, if we reduce by 0.5%, then we would still need three more years. So I would say two plus three, five years would be taken in order to reach a level of 3% of GDP. Right, sir. But of course, the FM has not indicated whether they intend to reach that level of 3% or whether, as recommended by the 15th Finance Commission, they would set up a high-powered uh, committee to re-examine the FRBM target, uh, which had given for the center a target of 3% of GDP. So we will have to see uh, how this goes about. But right now, we are uh, significantly away from the uh, FRBM target. Incidentally, it has a significant implication for interest rates because when government borrows relatively a large amount from the available investable resources, then what becomes available for the private sector and the non-government public sector becomes less. And that is why there is pressure on the interest rate. Right, right, sir. My third question for you is, the economic survey has pointed out that the government has done its heavy lifting in terms of capex in the past few years, and the private sector investments now need to start playing a bigger role. But with capacity utilization in the manufacturing sector having fallen to 72.4% in the first quarter of FY23, how realistic is the expectation of a much higher private sector investment this year? Well, government's own investment uh, expenditure is meant to crowd in private investment expenditure. But the relative importance of government capital expenditure, even if we combine central and state cap capex, is only 5% of the overall gross fixed capital formation. So the relative role of private investment expenditure is much larger than that of government capital expenditure. So the crowding in effect would be dependent on the demand that gets created both through investment stimulus and through any upward lift of consumption expenditure. Both are important components but even more important is the determination of private investment expenditure as a function of interest rate. Now, right now, because of high inflation rates and because of US Fed increasing the Fed rate, there is pressure for the nominal interest rates or the policy rate in India to be uplifted. And as long as we have a relatively high interest rate, it will be difficult to bring in additional private investment. And unless demand increases and unless cost of investment goes down, capacity utilization uh, may not pick up. So I would say that a new investment would start once capacity utilization crosses the threshold of 75 percent. We were close to that a little earlier, and I think we might reach there provided a situation is created when interest rate uh, in, in the system starts to go down and private investment expenditure would then be able to pick up. Those are pertinent points, sir. My last question to you is the budget anticipates much lower subsidy expenditures this year. So where do you think the cuts are possible? Well, the reduction in subsidy expenditure uh, has cut across both food subsidies and fertilizer subsidies and other petroleum 
price linked subsidies. These reduction uh, amounts are largely sensitive to global crude prices because once the subsidy amount is linked to the global crude prices, the uh, determination of the magnitude of subsidy would be sensitive to assumptions made regarding the movement uh, and extent of reduction in global crude prices. Now the budget states that directionally they expect the uh, crude prices to come down, but they do not indicate by what margin. And uh, in the current year, average price over the period from April to December was 97.3 USD per, per barrel. And currently, right now, it is uh, above 80, let's say uh, 83.5 or so. If the margin of reduction is not very substantial, the possibility of reducing the magnitude of subsidies in India by a large margin would not be there. So it is quite possible that the government has shown a significant reduction in major subsidies uh, based on the assumption of a significant reduction in crude prices, but they may not yet happen because global demand uh, once again has started to increase, particularly because of the fact that after the opening up, the Chinese economy has started to show higher growth rates and higher demand. So we will have to uh, watch carefully as to the movement of global crude prices and see if there is a significant reduction there. Right. Thank you so much for your views, Dr. Srivastava. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.